Okay, today we're going to do a review of my over the board chess tournament. Um, I'm going to do a couple of rounds of that. Um, I played this weekend in the Real uh, Bay Area Chess Championship. It's my second over the board tournament ever. My first over the board tournament did not go so well. I went one and three um, at the Sacramento Swiss number 24, which the reviews are on YouTube. And it gave me a provisional rating of 874, which I was a little disappointed in, because um, it's significantly below my rapid rating. Um, so today, however, I was uh, this weekend, I joined this tournament. And not only was it FIDE rated as well, um, but also it is in the Bay Area as opposed to Sacramento. So I don't know if you know the California landscape, but there's definitely stronger uh, chess scene in um, the Bay Area down in San Jose and Berkeley. And this was in San Jose. So or around Fremont, just close to San Jose. Uh, so I was thinking I was going to face much harder opponents and do much worse. And I didn't. Um, I didn't do fantastically, but I did OK. So what I'm going to do today is review some of those games. And we're going to start with round one. Uh, round one was round two for me uh, because I was not able to be to the first game because I had to pick up my daughter from the airport. But um, I, so I took a bye and it gave me a half a point. Um, that being said, round one for me, which was round two for the tournament, started Saturday morning at 9.30 in the morning. And I played, as you can see on the screen, um, uh, I don't want to get the name wrong, but all of these names are very hard. Um, they're all um, non-traditionally English names, so I'm not, I don't know how to pronounce them, so I apologize if I butcher them. Um, the first game was against Vedant Verma. Um, he was rated 1390 against myself, as I said, 874. And I had the black pieces. Um, so, uh, the game started, um, uh, he went uh, e4. I played what I usually play, which is the, the Sicilian, uh, going into the Accelerated Dragon. So, standard move so far. Um, nothing uh, unusual. Uh, this was, I was a little bit surprised in someone playing this over the board. It's not like a super uh, challenging opening, as far as I'm aware. Um, if you look here, like he has a 0.4 advantage. He takes it, and we're just dead even. So he just automatically gives up his advantage um, out of the gate. So I was happy with that. Um, it was a, a fine opening. And then I've seen this before online, right? But again, it you know it just gives him a, it gives me suddenly an, uh, uh, an advantage. I know it gets a little bit tricky sometimes, and people don't know how to play it. Um, it can get a little weird. What I've seen before is you know if you go knight here, then this pushes, and you come here, and then this pushes again, and you have to go back. But then they can take here with a check, and you take, and it gets a little complex because they can you know they can check you, and you have to go back. You don't, you lose casting rights. But all of that like aside from how crazy that looks, it, it's like not that threatening. Um, but I think a lot of people what they do is instead of playing this. Um, end up playing a move like this. Um, uh, or they just like blunder into like putting their bishop out because they're just so used to it. But this is an over the board game. So, you know, it, you have plenty of time to think. It was 90 minute games. Um, that being said, this kid was about 15 years old. He, wa he was 15 years old. Um, been playing chess for a while. Um, and this is, a, but definitely the highest rated player I played uh, in person and was the second highest rated person in the tournament in my bracket, which is the U1500 bracket. Um, but I just played, you know, uh, knight f6. I was not concerned. Um, and he followed up with knight c3, which was also weird to me because it was pretty unusual. It allowed me to develop my bishop, um, which kind of gave me like a discovered attack on the queen. And, uh, you know, just, again, wasn't very threatening. Uh, we're, we're at 0 0.3 advantage for black already. And we're, you know, how many moves in? We're, we're f five moves in or something. Like, this, this is not, uh, this is not um, particularly challenging, like I said. So, uh, seven moves in, sorry. Um, yeah, so I developed my bishop. Apparently, this was not the best move. Um, but it wanted me to go d4 here. And I understand why. I get it. 
Um, D4 does protect against these shenanigans, right? I can go here. Even if he takes, I can still come here. Uh, I understand that. Um, my move is this, however. And he followed up with going uh, bishop e3. At this point, I looked at it, and I thought that this was not good. Um, I just didn't feel threatened by this at all. Um, uh, yeah, like it just... I don't know. I, I get that, like, now if he does this, my best move is to go here and for him to take it and me to take it, or I have to undevelop, which just feels awful. Um, but he just, he didn't do that either. And so I was just like, I was ready for all of these things that he was going to do, and he didn't do any of them. So, uh, that being said, I castle, because castling seems like the best thing to do. Um... Now he can't win the pawn because I have this square, which is actually like a nice square. It doesn't get in the way of development. Um, and he uh, castles long. <clears throat> so now I'm basically free. And my thinking was, I don't really like this bishop uh, combo. This is usually what uh, gives me a lot of problems on uh, Fianchetto's uh, issues, like a, a bishop queen battery, at least at my level. And it'll be really nice to take this right and i have the option to take it he can't stop it um, if i go like this it reveals this attack and he can do nothing about me taking this uh taking this bishop um so i do um the computer says it's a bad idea and i totally understand why um uh i really like what the computer wants me to do um looking at it uh the computer wants me to go here uh and that is super interesting um <laughs> <clears throat> because it gives me an option of where to attack and ultimately more options on how to attack the queen if for some reason he moves his queen to a weird spot, right? It takes away move areas of his queen, right? Um, if he's going here, um, if, you know, like if he comes here, there, there's just like a bunch of interesting, unique follow-ups that I could do based on this. Um, so yeah, I like the computer's move there, but that's, ultimately that's not what I played. Um, I went over here, he played the best move, uh, queen d2, and I proceeded to take, uh, you know, at that point, it was the best move, I had already committed to that, <laughs> so I was going to do it, um, he took his queen, and at this point, I start looking at it, and I'm thinking, this is an easily missed thing, <laughs> so I wonder if there's a way in which I can develop, where I could get this going, so... After thinking for a while, I decided to push a pawn on the queen side. The reason I decided to push the pawn on the queen side is A, it like pseudo gets an attack going. Now, granted, I see that it still wants me to do this because it wants me to develop my, uh, develop my bishop out here and it wants me to, you know, do all the standard things. But A, this kind of gets, a, gets an attack started in case I have to go this route, which I didn't mind doing. Um, B, it gets him focused over here and maybe not necessarily thinking so much over here, right? And C, it gets him to start thinking about attacking over here, which is what I wanted him to do. I wanted him to attack on my king side because my thought was the more he's attacking my king side, the easier it's going to be to miss this because when you're attacking on your king side, because I'm doing stuff over here, he's not going to be thinking about making a move like that, right? So these are my thoughts, right? I, I didn't think it was going to win, but I thought maybe I'd be able to earn some pressure to win a piece. Um, he pushed this pawn, which is surprising because I did expect him to push the pawn that is recommended by the computer. Um, and um, I responded by pushing uh, my e pawn. Um, generally, this just seems better for me, right? If he takes, I take. Um, if he pushes, like, I'm just not, this is just not a concern for me. I just let it, I let him push. Um, and I'd probably just do nothing because if he opens up my rook, like I, I have no problems with that. Um, uh, at this point, you know, I've now made space to develop my queen. I can back this up if I want to. I could use this to attack the center pawn. Like there's so many things I can do here. Um, and he was kind of frozen. He thought for a while here um, and he brought his bishop out. And I could kind of see what he was doing. And I started being happy because this move to try and get him to attack on the king side, which is very normal when you start pushing on the queen side on opposite side castles, 
usually what's going on is it's a trigger for the opponent to start attacking on the other side. So he's pinning my, uh, uh, pinning my my uh, king, and the idea here is that like you know if he were to take if he were to push here, and and I let him take I couldn't take this way I'd have to take this way which is much more dangerous considering it's a rook over here. Um, so I just take because. My thinking was, again, I knew this wasn't the best move. My thinking is, it's getting him one step closer to here. Because what I noticed in this position, that I didn't talk about, in this position, even if I were to be able to get this here and have it defended, he can still block like this. He has one blocker. This one can't block, this one can't block, these can't block, this can't block, but he has this blocker. So I get here and I'm like, okay, I'm one step closer to this plan. And so I thought, all right, <laughs> how far do we go with this plan? <laughs> At this point, I'm starting to doubt it. I'm starting to go, have we gone too far? <laughs> but I was already in it, and so I just went for it. All right, now this is a miss. It reduces my advantage significantly, as you can see. Um, but I didn't freak out. Um, I just kind of was like, all right, we're opening it up. I figured at this point he would see or he wouldn't see. This was kind of the test. And if I had to at this point, I could push this pawn or I could move my king, I could push this pawn, etc. There's things I had options, right? Um, he moves here. And now I can see all he's got on his mind that's attacking, right? Like, um... He attacks like this, I take like this. He has basically like some sort of, you know, rough situation for me, right? Like a really bad situation. Um, uh, yeah. And I act like, oh shit, I wanna get out of this pin, right? Because obviously if I could do this, and, and, and this like played into my, played into my, into my favor so well. Because the idea is if I could do this, and that's why this pawn should be pushed, if I can do this right now, I'm actually in pretty good shape. <laughs> because he has no attack if my king was over here. Right? This is attacking nothing. Uh, he's not going to attack this with his queen, and it's fine. I still have a 0.5 advantage. So I set the trap, officially. Now I give him, you know, the slightest bit of advantage, the slightest bit. Um, but I set a trap, so I wasn't too concerned. The thought here was, if he does anything besides move his queen, he loses his queen, or or move his, he could move his, move his king, right? But I'm watching this kid, and he's super super focused. At this point, I'm kind of playing the person. This is where my my poker background comes into. And he's super focused on this attack. And he is so confused by this move because all he's thinking about is, this is now free. If he, if he takes this, right? Like I think he expected me to, to defend this way um, instead of moving away from it. And now he's thinking, this is a free pawn, right? If he takes this, I can't do anything. What's nothing I can do? Um, and granted it's bad for probably multiple reasons. If he takes this, and I come here, then it's probably not a free pawn anymore because uh, now he has to move his queen uh, out of the way or he has to move his bishop back and lose his queen. So it's not the best idea. <laughs> so he takes it. Even if none of that other stuff was true, this is a better idea. <laughs> <laughs> So, um, yeah, so at this point I was super happy. The game gets really simple from here. Uh, he chose to move his king, which was not the best move. Apparently the best move was for me to take, like for him to take like this, uh, or no, wait. And then me to go like this or something like that. Um, and, uh, yeah, and, and like at least in this case, you know, then he can take h6. 
he gets a bishop, he goes back, right? And yeah, I'm up 3.8 points of material, but like, it's not crazy. Instead, uh, he just moves his king, so I just take his queen. Uh, <clears throat> he takes his, he takes that with his rook, and I just come here, because I'm like, okay, well, you know, now your knight is, is screwed. Um, he defends here. Uh, I come up here with my queen to defend even further. Because basically he's going to lose this. If he takes back, you know, I can take back and he'll take back and I'll take back. And, you know, that end game is me being up a rook in an end game. That game's over. Right, I'm happy to trade my queen for uh, my tr my queen and a rook for a bishop and two rooks. I'm happy uh, in this end game right now. So he just moves it, and I take. He takes. I come here and threaten, and it all gets very simple here. Right, I move up here. He comes down. I come over here. I'm threatening mate, um, and I'm threatening this pawn. Uh, he moves because he doesn't want mate, so I take the pawn. That. Uh, this push is kind of weird because it lines it up for this push. And here I, I made probably a critical mistake. Um, I checked here instead of just taking. And my thought was, oh, if I check, it'll put him in the corner and then I'll take. Um, but realistically, I probably wanted this check for later. And I think that comes into play, actually, where if he would have been on a, been there, it would have been great. I moves this knight here, but again, this just leaves another pawn undefended. He comes here, which is a fine move. Um, I was concerned about this for some reason. Uh, oh no, I was, con I don't know what I was concerned about. I just wanted to make sure that he wasn't going to be able to, to fork my queen. So I came here, he checks me, I move over there. He comes down here. I come up here. Uh, he goes after this pawn. I go here, he checks me again. And we're just kind of like maneuvering around. He comes up here, and I see what he wants to do, right? Like, he's 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 trying to set some traps to win with, to win the queen back. So I'm just staying out of the way. Uh, when he does this, my thought is, this bishop's kind of trapped. <laughs> so I do this just to, like, kind of, like, set a trap, and he just, like, fell for it. I guess he was really flustered at this point. And I went here, and this is where he should trade, Right? No big deal. It happens. Trades. It, you know, it is what it is. Um, and he just went there. And he went there. And that was that. Um, I just called it. Called it a game. And, uh, yeah. So, that was how that game ended. And, ultimately, I was really happy with this play. Um, he was a much stronger opponent than I'm used to playing. And, um... I was happy with playing the game the way that I played the game. And I think it went really well, and it felt really good. Um, the kid was pretty upset when he was pretty devastated when he lost his uh, queen. But um, it was an awesome start. I was feeling really good. Um, and ultimately, I felt probably a little bit too good, as you'll see in the next, the next video. Um, but yeah, so that was game one. And um, yeah. I will end it there. All right. Uh, thanks again. Thanks for hanging out. Um, if you're on YouTube, like, subscribe, follow, whatever. Do those things that people do. And I will catch people later. Take care. Bye-bye.